The HM3 system of building makes medieval buildings much easier. Stay tuned. What's up survivalists, it's Shane from Team WJ here to enhance your animations and tell your stories. If you're new here, I make Minecraft animation tutorials every Monday, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to not miss any uploads. If you're not, welcome back. Today I will be starting the long-awaited medieval building guide tutorial-ish sort of thing while I'll be running you through the basics of HM3. I'm gonna break the basics down into five parts, but I have been wrong before when I divide my parts, but what it should be like is first part, scaffolding, that's this video, the next part's gonna be on the walls, then it'll be the roof, then it'll be the details, and finally the interior. Now it's really important that if you want to learn more of the HM3 system that you master this part first because everything else revolves around the basic two-story L-shaped one-level hemorrhage house. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into game and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, cool. So we're on my private server now. This is the house that I built in the first video talking to you about what the HM3 system is. So we're going to be starting off by building the scaffolding. That's all the wood parts that you see here. All we basically need for this is just a basic log. And I want to get you guys used to using the commands. So if you have essentials on your server, all you need to do is type slash I171. This is going to give you one oak log block. If you're, say, building with spruce, you can do slash I17 colon 1, space 1, and it's going to give you 1 spruce. Uh, birch would be 2, and jungle would be 3. The other, the other woods have like a different code to them, but I think mostly we'll be using this. I'm going to be using the oak log for this video, and I recommend that you do too. So pick a good location. I'm on a super flat world, so it doesn't really matter for me. I'm just going to place down one random block, and this is going to be my starting block. This represents the corner of the house. When I place this down, it's either this corner or this corner or this corner or this corner, but I'm not going to start with like that in the middle or, you know, like this, this pillar in the middle. I, I never start with the middle. I start with the corner always. Then I look around and see which space is open. So I'm not going to build a house this way because there's a house already there. I'm going to build a house that way or that way or the other way, right? I'm just going to do it this way for this video. Now, how many blocks do you put in between? You always want to stick with an odd number. This way, you can always find the middle. This makes building a lot easier. So stick to odd numbers for now. The HM3 system does account for even numbers, but we'll stick to odd numbers for the basic video. In the basic hemorrhage house, we have three blocks in between. When I place logs like this down, I know that they're five blocks apart, but we say three block intervals because the space in between is one, two, three blocks. So we call this a three block gap or three block interval. We don't say five blocks, even though they're actually five blocks. Now that the first two blocks have been placed, we're gonna just complete the rest of the pillars. From the corner, I'm gonna extrude from the, to the other side. Let's do one here. It's again, three blocks. And from here, I'm gonna do another three blocks. Over here, we're gonna do another three blocks. We're gonna extrude two pillars from the origin point. This will allow us to do an L-shaped house. The L-shaped house is just a basic shape that we should take. Everything else is basically built along the L-shaped house. So from here, we'll go three blocks back, do another three block here, three blocks there, and you should have this sort of shape. See how that forms an L-shape? That's perfect. Now, what are the advantages of using an L-shaped house? Well, first of all, it, acts, it adds complexity to what would be a very basic house. If we smash these two off, this would look very blank. Now that we add these two down, we have a lot more options to play with. Secondly, this itself is already very modular. I can stick doors and windows basically wherever I want. Before I get into that though, let's start building things up. So now we'll add an extra block on top of all the pillars. Just facing upwards, log blocks, nothing special. So two blocks on top of every pillar. Like so. Now this part's important. Every pillar should be connected using a, hor a horizontal or vertical log. The ones inside the building, so this one and this one, are just as simple as that. We just need to paste logs going across. This shows that the building is being supported on the inside. This is like a supporting pillar. The ones facing outside, like these, when you place them across, destroy the middle one while placing a block down and make this one face outwards. This just changes up the texture a little bit. It adds more color. So let's do all that. So once you have that done, it should look something like this. Now the next thing we have to do is start working on the second floor. The basic hemorrhage building only has two floors. There's the ground floor and there's the top floor. If we want to build a shorter house or a taller house, again, it's always a modification on the basic house. This is the basic house. Build it with two floors first. 
then work on the rest. Hemorrhage houses do this thing called an extrusion. We take these pillars here and we put an extra block facing outwards. What this shows is that this pillar going across here is actually sticking out and being supported by this ground pillar, just like how it would be in real life. So let's do that for all sides. If we get to the corner here and you might not know what to do, you can choose two things. You can choose either this, that, or that. Completely up to you, I don't really care, I just do that. For some of you, it might even be a good place for you to put in the all side log. If you're playing 1.13, you have access to this. If not, like me on 1.12, simply select it with world edit and do slash as set 17.12 and that's the all side oak log. Again, completely up to you, it doesn't really matter. Now the thing with hemorrhage houses are that the top floor are bigger than the bottom floor. So it extrudes out using those extrusions. What we're gonna do is build two blocks on top of every extrusion, except on the corner. In the corner here where it bends, simply put one block on. You'll see why later. For everything else, two blocks on top of the extrusions. So go ahead and double check that everything is on top of an extrusion, otherwise you're gonna have problems later on. Now we can start working on roofs. When building roofs, there is a concept of dominant and recessive roofs. The dominant roof is the main roof, the recessive roof is anything that goes underneath it. Make sure you build the dominant roof first, then the recessive roofs. Let me show you an example. The dominant roof must go through the entire building. So let's start here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this, this direction as the dominant roof. From one of these pillars, I'm gonna drop two blocks like so. Again, drop two blocks. Now finish with two blocks like so. From here, this has to go all the way along to the other side, uninterrupted. And I'm gonna finish it on the same way over on this side. This here is the dominant roof. It is the tallest roof of the building and everything else will go underneath this roof. Let's build the recessive roof so I can demonstrate this. The recessive roof is gonna face this way. It's gonna start off relatively the same, except on the top, instead of having two blocks, we're just gonna do one block. So it's one block shorter than the dominant roof. And I'm gonna bring this back over. See how this gets interrupted by the dominant roof? That's fine. We're gonna bring this over to the other side. Let's finish this over here. Like so. So now we have a dominant roof, the top one, and a recessive roof, the bottom one. Everything else can be used for decoration. So this spot, you can either leave this blank or you could do what I'm doing right now and have what I just call a small roof, like so. I'm gonna show you what it looks like here with a small roof. And on the other side, I'm just gonna leave this blank. So this is completely up to you what you do. This is the first example of it being modular because you can choose what you wanna do with these designs. We'll get to the other side here later, but because there's a two block gap and it's an even number, not odd, we'll have to deal with this. So with that done, this is your basic hemorrhage house scaffolding. It's really as simple and basic as that, but everything gets more complicated as the system progresses. So make sure you check out the playlist of all the HM3 tutorials so you can follow along in a streamlined fashion. Hope to see you in the next video where I do the walls of this building. Cheers. Hey, do you want to learn animation but don't know where to start? Why not check out my beginners to advanced playlist designed to help you improve your animations right here. If this video has helped you, don't forget to share it and help your friends too. I'm a YouTuber trying to influence and change Minecraft animations for the better while working on my own animated series, Levislear. You can play a massive role in the development of Levislear by watching more of my videos or checking out my Patreon. With that said and done, this has been Che from Team WNJ to improve your animations and tell your stories. Cheers!